For broken back tabs on a lot of sneaker models and broken wings on Jordan 4s, this is how you fix it the way the sneaker gods intended. Hello and welcome to Papi Shulo. My name is Chris and this is a seam ripper. You should use these instead of an X-Acto blade if you can, because they were made only to rip the seam without damaging anything else. Though be careful to only push it straight. Typically on accessories like this, there's going to be a pocket where the accessory extends so it can get sewn in clean. Run your blade right behind the pocket lip. Try to keep the tab as intact as possible. We'll go over later why. Once the tab is out, clean out the whole area. The loose stitches are going to still be glued down in places. So use any tools you have to make sure the pocket and top are clear of debris. Use an X-Acto blade and cut a line on the collar all the way down by the heel that you're sure the insole will cover. Next, use a blow dryer or heat gun to loosen the glue on the inside heel. Be patient with this part because you don't want to rip up the foam that's underneath the collar lining. Let the heat do the work. If the old back tab is still intact, you can use it as a template for your new one to mark off where your stitch holes should go because that's where the factory stitch holes were and that's what we're aiming for. So I use heat and then I just kept rolling it without creasing it until finally it was nice and flat. Line up the old back tab in front of the new back tab, clamp it down using an awl, and I poke holes in the old back tab factory holes so I can make little divots on the new back tab to know where the stitches should go. You could, if you want, mark out the top half of the holes with a magic pen so you can have a little more contrast when you're sewing. Back when you heat up the glue on the collar lining, you may have also heated up the glue on the heel, and there may have been some threads that were back there that were covered in glue before, but now they're poking out. Just make sure, again, that the pocket is clean and clear of debris before you make your bond. For a Jordan 4 back tab, you can use the top stitching as your border for your glue so you know that if you don't go outside of that top stitching, then the glue will not be visible once the new back tab is installed. On the front of the back tab itself, the corner up halfway is exactly where the pocket ends. So try to bring the glue right up to that corner and don't go past it for the wedge there. And then you should be good with no visible glue on the outside of the back tab. Your glue border is going to be the same on the back. Get on the whole surface all the way up to the top stitch line and then stop. Let all of the glue dry for at least 20 minutes before the next step. Now, I don't recommend trying to shove the whole back tab in at once and start sewing because the stiffness of the new back tab is just not going to allow for a nice clean fit. So what I recommend doing is start in one corner and line up the factory holes and then use a sewing pin and push down and then line up the other corner and do the same thing. And once they're both locked in place, then you can start heating and bonding. 
As I'm bonding, I add more sewing pins just to keep everything in place while I'm actually sewing. Number 92 bonded nylon thread is what I figured out Jordan and Nike use on the exterior of their shoes. In the Amazon link below, there is two sets, one of 12 neutral colors and the other of 12 bright colors, and they are the best bang for your buck. I'm putting this part in slow motion because it is crucial that you take the collar lining and you put it over the arm so that your back stitch is under underneath the collar lining or else your back stitch is going to be on the collar and visible. Now this is something I choose to do. You do not have to do this, but I remove the foot so I can clearly see the factory hole. Now when you do this, it takes longer to stitch because you don't have the foot holding the shoe down for you. So you need to hold it down yourself and line everything up yourself. But for me, this guarantees that I get every single factory hole. Your first stitch should be right before the last hole of the one that was cut and your last stitch should be right after the one that was cut and there should be a lock stitch on both sides. Well, our Chinese leather patcher only has one needle so we're gonna have to do this two times to make up that parallel stitch line. The front stitch color is always going to matter in a restoration project and a custom project. Obviously it's up to you, but in this case I have two different colors on the front stitch. The black border is on the top half and red on the bottom half. The color of the back stitch in this instance does not matter, but sometimes it does. So make sure that you are researching the shoe that you're restoring just to make sure that the interior looks correct also. Here's an example of a lock stitch in case you don't know what that is. Very simple. You just go over the same stitch in the opposite direction once. Sometimes I do it back and forth a couple times. That locks the stitch in place. Now, if you can do that back tab, then you definitely can do the wings. I feel like the back tab is harder than the wings. First thing I do is heat up the glue to loosen it up and then get a seam ripper in there and rip up the threads. I will say though, I think there's more cleanup in the pockets of these wings than there is on the back tab. Here's a little hack in removing those cut thread ends. Here I have a glue eraser. I don't think it has to be a glue eraser. It could be any eraser. Just using that friction pops them all out. This is also going to be the same for the front crowns. Just be sure that you don't go ahead of yourself and cut too many threads when you're cutting because there's only about a set of five or so and then you're done. cleanly get glue in the pockets for the wings and the pockets for the crowns. Stick something in there to keep the two sides separate while they're drying out. I used a popsicle stick. Gluing the wings and the crowns is pretty self-explanatory because the wedges are easy to see. Apply glue on one side of the wedge and let it sit and dry. And then I do the same for the other and that is both for the crowns and the wings.
Lining up the wings and crowns is much easier than lining up the back tab because you don't have that curvature to worry about. Line it in once it's dry, put some sewing pins in, apply some heat to create the bond. And now we're ready to sew, Pookie. Yeah, I called you Pookie. Here's a full sewing run on the crown. Start with the lock stitch there. Now I ran into some trouble um, with these crowns in lining up the needle some reason the way I'm holding the shoe pushes the needle off place for the hole underneath so I learned to not force that down and just kind of tap until I can find it that's one of the drawbacks of not using a foot like I did I'd like to point out for the wings that this is the way that they sew it. They start on one line and then go down to the next line, go across that whole line, go up to the first line and go down that whole line. You're basically sewing a rectangle and that creates a lock stitch and it's all one piece of thread. Even though we just did something super cool, we're not done yet. We still have to reinstall the collar lining. Apply glue on both the interior and the back side of the collar lining. Do it nice and neat. Let it dry. Once the glue is dry, you can start forming to its factory look. Form one spot and then heat and then form another spot and then heat. The heating makes the forming very forgiving. And if you want, you can use sewing pins. I chose to use sewing pins because I wanted to make sure that that bottom was seamless. Stitching the bottom of the collar is totally optional. I do it because I have a hand crank cobbler sewing machine. Link in that Amazon store as well. Now this shoe was a complete overhaul, did a repaint, did a sole swap, did a repaint on the midsole of the sole swap. This video isn't really about all that, so I'll just show all that stuff real quick before we go to the before and afters.